I have a question for you. Sino sa inyo ang mahilig mag-daydream? Yung tipong uh, in-imagine mo halimbawa yung crush mo, tapos kung ano yung um, gusto mong sabihin niya sa'yo, tapos kung um, ano yung sasabihin mo, ganun, o kaya uh, yung promotion mo sa trabaho, o kung halimbawa meron kang performance or speech na um, gagawin, tapos iniisip mo kung ano yung kung paano mo siya i-deliver, kung ano maging reaction ng audience, ganyan. Um, sino sa inyo ang gumagawa nito? <laughs> And the reason that I'm asking you this is because it's related to the chapter for today, um, which is chapter 14. It's the sixth sense, the door to the temple of wisdom, the thirteenth step toward riches. Um, so, the sixth sense, usually when we think about it, we think of something that's supernatural or like it's a superpower that um, somebody has. But the discussion about it um, in this chapter is uh, not really like that. Um It says that it's that portion of the subconscious mind which has been referred to as the creative imagination. If you remember uh, from my previous sharing, I talked about the two kinds of imagination, the synthetic and the creative imagination. The creative imagination um, being that uh, part of your self that Uh, receives hunches or um, where you get those aha moments because it's it's the the one that's in communication with infinite intelligence so that's exactly what the sixth sense is about or where it comes from it comes from the subconscious mind um which we refer to as a creative imagination. It's a mixture of both the mental and spiritual. So, um, allow me to read from portions of the book. Uh, it says here, through the aid of the sixth sense, you will be warned of impending dangers in time to avoid them and notified of opportunities in time to embrace them. There comes to your aid and to do your bidding with the development of the sixth sense, a guardian angel who will open to you at all times the door to the temple of wisdom. So what does this have to do with my question to you earlier? Uh, what I found very interesting in this chapter was the author's sharing about how he built his character through his imagination and what he imagined was that he was holding a council meeting with the people that he most admired so these were nine men that he looked up to and every night he would pretend or he would imagine that he would um, be in a meeting with these men uh, Let me look for that part. Okay. It's building character through auto-suggestion. Okay. But before that, um, he also mentioned that uh, he would try to imitate these people that he admired. No? And he, um, he referred to it as hero worship. So, uh, he said... While I was passing through the age of hero worship, I found myself trying to imitate those whom I most admired. Moreover, I discovered that the element of faith with which I endeavored to imitate my idols gave me great capacity to do so quite successfully. I have never entirely divested myself of this habit of hero worship, although I have passed the age commonly given over to such. My experience has taught me that the next best thing to being truly great is to emulate the great, 
by feeling and action as nearly as possible. Long before I had ever written a line for publication or endeavored to deliver a speech in public, I followed the habit of reshaping my own character by trying to imitate the nine men whose lives and life works had been most impressive to me. These nine men were Emerson, Paine, Edison, Darwin, Lincoln, Burbank, Napoleon, Ford, and Carnegie. Every night over a long period of years, I held an imaginary council meeting with this group whom I called my invisible counselors. So, the difference between Napoleon Hill <laughs> and us is while we would daydream about our crush or our promotion or that speech that we're going to make or talking to um, this person and how he or she is going to respond to us, he would daydream or use his imagination uh, to have council meetings with these great men that he looked up to. And he would serve as the chairman of these meetings. So, um, he would say things like, Mr. Emerson, I desire to acquire from you the marvelous understanding of nature which distinguished your life. I ask that you make an impress upon my subconscious mind of whatever qualities you possessed, which enabled you to understand and adapt yourself to the laws of nature. I ask that you assist me in reaching and drawing upon whatever sources of knowledge are available to this end. So, stuff like that, and so on and so forth. Uh, let me read this part on building character through auto-suggestion. He says, Being an earnest student of psychology, I knew, of course, that all men have become what they are because of their dominating thoughts and desires. I knew that every deeply seated desire has the effect of causing one to seek outward expression through which that desire may be transmuted into reality. I knew that self-suggestion is a powerful factor in building character, that it is, in fact, the sole principle through which character is builded. With this knowledge of the principles of mind operation, I was fairly well armed with the equipment needed in rebuilding my character. In these imaginary council meetings, I called on my cabinet members for the knowledge I wished each to contribute, addressing myself to each member in audible words. And here's the interesting part. So, when you imagine something, you know that it's not real. It's not real in the sense that it's just your imagination. It's not actually happening um, in reality because it's, it's in your head. But uh, the interesting thing with um, these council meetings that he held was that the characters seemed to take a life <laughs> of their own in his imagination um, to the point that they each had uh, their own peculiar like quirks or characteristics um, they became very real um, for for him uh, na parang baka isipin nyo nga parang meron na siyang parang nang, meron na siyang mental disorder kasi or you know some neurosis of sort um Kasi totoong totoo na siya <laughs> in his head. He said, I was astounded by the discovery that these imaginary figures became apparently real. Each of these nine men developed individual characteristics, which surprised me. For example, Lincoln developed the habit of always being late, then walking around in solemn parade. When he came, he walked very slowly with his hands clasped behind him and once in a while he would stop as he passed and rest his hand momentarily upon my shoulder. And then it reached a point where these characters would actually give him advice. Um, 
like he said one evening edison arrived ahead of all the others he walked over and seated himself at my left where emerson was accustomed to sit and said you are destined to witness the discovery of the secret of life when the time comes you will observe that life consists of great swarms of energy or entities each as intelligent as human beings think themselves to be these units of life group together like hives of bees and remain together until they disintegrate through lack of harmony these units have differences of opinion the same as human beings and often fight among themselves these meetings which you are conducting will be very helpful to you they will bring to your rescue some of the same units of life which served the members of your cabinet during their lives these units are eternal they never die your own thoughts and desires serve as the magnet which attracts units of life from the great ocean of life out there only the friendly units are attracted the ones which harmonize with the nature of your desires so he said these meetings became so realistic that i became fearful of their consequences and discontinued them for several months the experiences were so uncanny i was afraid if i continued them i would lose sight of the fact that the meetings were purely experiences of my imagination so one of the men in his council was still alive during the time that um napoleon hill was conducting these meetings in his head no and that was edison and um when edison said something to him in his imagination it made a mark it left a mark on him that he he really looked for edison sought him out um <laughs> and talked to him like in real life uh because of what the edison in his head said to him and and uh, what edison said in real life was your dream was more a reality than you may imagine it to have been and so he continued to have these meetings um and there was a time when um he wasn't sure if he was dreaming or 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 what <laughs> or if it really happened um but he said that he saw lincoln standing at his bedside saying the world will soon need your services it is about to undergo a period of chaos which will cause men and women to lose faith and become panic stricken go ahead with your work and complete your philosophy that is your mission in life if you neglect it for any cause whatsoever you will be reduced to a primal state and be compelled to retrace the cycles through which you have passed during thousands of years regarding these meetings he says while the members of my cabinet may be purely fictional so he acknowledges no that that they're not real that they're just in his head um but says also that the meetings existent only in my own imagination have led me into glorious paths of adventure rekindled an appreciation of true greatness encouraged creative endeavor and emboldened the expression of honest thought so what does this have to do <laughs> with sixth sense i guess in his experience um through his use of his creative imagination he would receive wisdom from the meetings that he had with these people that he admired and um usually at the opportune time like the timing um was perfect uh is it because the advice really came from these people or was it napoleon hill um giving himself his own advice we're not really sure um as was mentioned earlier it's a combination of uh, the sixth sense is a combination of both the mental and spiritual i guess um 
we can think of it as uh, somewhat like like praying you know um communicating with this higher power with this higher being and while we may not like literally physically hear an answer or his voice although i remember um ara no <laughs> telling me a couple of days ago that sometimes you know she would really uh hear this voice saying focus on the mission focus on the mission so it's like it's um god really telling her to do something and maybe that's how it is for for some people maybe for others it isn't quite like that maybe it's um like when you least expect it you 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 happen to uh, look at something chance upon something and then like suddenly you know light bulb moment uh that something that you look at or that um, makes its presence felt <laughs> at that moment suddenly gives you the answer to the question that you have or um maybe you hear something maybe you know it's but but uh the i think the key here is to let yourself be open uh to um all these signs around you that are pointing to something or telling you something um signs not in the sense that we usually ask for them like typically when we when we say um we're praying for a sign or like um sometimes even give conditions right like uh okay if if you want me to do this lord then um please send me um a red rose <laughs> or something like that uh maybe that works too right but but w- what i'm um driving at here is just you know being more mindful and more attentive and paying you know more attention to the things that are happening around us and um acknowledging that all of these little things um are or could be showing us something guiding us towards um somewhere and that is uh how you know you are um tapping into your sixth sense so um my children are actually sleeping right now <laughs> and that's uh the the and this is the only time that i can do this <laughs> when they're already asleep um I'm I'm grateful that uh, they haven't woken up yet because when I tend to get excited my uh, my my voice um rises up a notch but it is an exciting uh topic um to share with you guys and uh I hope again that you learn something from me <laughs> today thank you